Welcome everybody. Uh, this is Jason Fisk and I am the Business Account Manager here at FileMaker and I'll be uh, your host for today's Making the Case for FileMaker web seminar. Uh, today we're going to be talking about business case development. We're talking about um, communication styles and options uh, and communication techniques for presenting your FileMaker based solutions. Uh, to your users and getting buy-in uh, from uh, the appropriate decision makers within your organizations or possibly in your customer organizations. Uh, I'll be presenting and I'm going to be assisted today uh, by Eric Frazier. Eric is our project manager at, at FileMaker Marketing. Uh, but before we get started, we do have some housekeeping that we'd like to chat with you about. Uh, first and foremost, um, for the best experience, we hope that uh, you all have joined today's webinar with um, a broadband connection. Uh, the other thing that uh, you might want to consider in the future is if you are going to be attending FileMaker web seminars, you may want to attend via iPad or iPhone. I see that some of you have done that today. I've done it myself. It's an excellent experience. It allows you to, uh, to go a little bit more mobile um, and uh, enjoy that. And there's an app available uh, in the App Store. Uh, additionally, if you have any questions or require some uh, assistance at any time uh, on the technical front, please contact Citrix Technical Support. I'm going to give you their 800 number. It is 888-259-8414. Uh, that number again is 888-259-8414. Additionally, uh, during today's uh, presentation, you will have the opportunity to ask questions. So let's talk a little bit about how to ask a question. Um, so you should all be seeing the control panel uh, on your screen. Uh, and you'll notice here that we have a questions section. Uh, if it's not fully expanded, you can click on the arrow there, and it should expand out. Um, and uh, once you've done that, you can go ahead and type your question into the questions area and then hit the send button uh, and Eric will be sort of going through that and helping me at the end of the presentation uh, to ask uh, to uh, address some of the questions that you've entered there and we're going to go through as many uh, as we can as many as uh, time allows at the end of the presentation so with that um, let me introduce myself. I, as I said at the top there, I'm Jason uh, from FileMaker. I'm the business account manager. I'm based here in the Atlantic Territory, which means I cover uh, the New York area. I also handle the DC market. Um, and uh, I'm enjoying uh, celebrating my 10th year uh, at FileMaker now. Uh, I meet with approximately 100 uh, customers a year. Uh, and uh, I have more meetings than that, but oftentimes we have more than one meeting during the course of a year with a customer. Uh, and my customers run the gamut, right? So they're very small clients, small business owners, uh, as well as you know all the way up to Fortune 10 businesses. And of course, uh, I also handle the federal government for FileMaker. And so all of that has given me something of a unique perspective on how people build FileMaker solutions and how the FileMaker solutions impact the lives of their coworkers and indeed the lives of the organizations that they work in. So my objective today is sort of to help you answer the question uh, that I hear so often from our FileMaker developer community, which is, hey, this FileMaker platform is just wonderful. It's great. I can't believe what I can do with it. But I can't understand why I struggle with uh, explaining the wonderfulness of FileMaker to others. Right? So hopefully I'm going to be able to help you devise a strategy for answering that question by the end of our conversation today. The other thing, um, and I'm giving away a little bit of the ending here, but I really want to motivate you all to take inventory of your solutions, your proposals, uh, your plans, uh, and your organizational needs and desires so that you can build an a organizational benefit statement around the solutions that you've built. And one of the interesting challenges that FileMaker developers have, because they are a wonderful group of people that are can-do people, have a great can-do spirit, it's a common thing that I see, is they think the rest of the world uh, shares the spirit, uh, uh, the can-do spirit. In reality, uh, you all are quite the exception. So the, the notion is that we've got to present what you've done in a way that others can understand it. Uh, and so that'll be some of what we talk about today. 
And then the other thing that I want to talk a little bit about is encouraging you to plan and grow your communication styles, your techniques, and indeed some of the vocabulary. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that later on. Uh, but not everybody communicates uh, in the same way. You know, indeed, within the FileMaker community, within the technical community at large, we all have our own uh, dictionary, our own three-letter acronym dictionary that we all speak in. And one of the things that we're going to talk about at the end of the presentation is encouraging you all to kind of take a look at that and see how effective we can be with perhaps a different approach. So with that, um, ultimately what we're going to get to is that we want to make your lives easier and more enriching so that you can get what you want, which uh, typically would mean um, uh, more rewarding experience as a FileMaker developer and ultimately as a business leader. So, first and foremost, uh, communication point number one. FileMaker, really the experience, again, this is after 10 years and a couple hundred customers uh, I've seen, the collective experience is about building solutions. It's not necessarily about having great solutions. It's about an ongoing, constant improvement process. Uh, and so one of the things that is important to communicate early on with uh, your end users, with your management, with your potential customers is that, you know, this is an ongoing relationship. The thing that separates FileMaker solutions from web-based solutions or off-the-shelf solutions is that development is part of what you're asking to do. It, it, you can work around and improve your solutions over a period of time so that you have something that you can grow into uh, and it's something that's going to evolve with your needs as your business changes. So that's a, a quick point there that I want to make. So the agenda here today, what we're going to do is we're going to go through a case study of what not to do. I've got a wonderful person. This is a real person who is struggling, but they contribute mightily to their organization uh, and they are making some mistakes there that I want to share with you. Uh, briefly, but then what we're going to do in greater detail is go through some case studies of what folks have actually done uh, in the wild and what's been very, very effective. So we'll look at each one of those. And then finally what we're going to do is we're going to apply the lessons uh, of these successful implementations to what I'll call a sales process or a communications process uh, that we can all step through. So that's kind of the agenda for today. So I alluded to this word process before. Um, I mean it, and, and, and it's some steps here. So what I would encourage a FileMaker developer, someone who's uh, accustomed to building FileMaker solutions, is view this as a development effort. To use it as a pro view it as a project. You know, we've got to understand the the business need. We need to build rapport with the person that we're trying to communicate with. We need to take that individual on a journey. Right? Here's what our FileMaker solution is. Is it does? Here's how it works. Uh, not necessarily the nuts and bolts of how it works, but how the work flows through the solution. Uh, help folks to look at solutions and compare them to other alternatives. Hey, we could go with Salesforce as a CRM tool. What are the strengths and weaknesses of each one of those platforms? We could go with an off-the-shelf package that does uh, project management for us, but how does a FileMaker solution compare with that? You know, and then guide uh, folks uh, to understand what the parameters of the solution are. FileMaker can scale to this number of users simultaneously. This solution that we might buy off the shelf can handle this number of people simultaneously and within these certain budget frames. Um, so that's another thing that you can help your customers with. And when I say customer, I also mean manager or I mean uh, decision maker within your organization. So we all have customers in that regard. And then finally, uh, focusing on the benefits and the return on investment and, and coming up with a vocabulary and a terminology and a metric that we can all agree on, right? It doesn't make a lot of sense, for instance, to build a, a great return on investment presentation if your organization isn't interested in return on investment. They may be more interested in some kind of compliance standard, as an example. So if we're building medical solutions, you know, it's imperative that these solutions be HIPAA compliant or CFR 21 Part 11 compliant. So perhaps Perhaps our presentation isn't about return on investment in a compliance environment. Perhaps our presentation is really about compliance. And so it's going to be incumbent upon you to understand what the metrics of success are within your organization and then build a business benefit statement that speaks to those needs. And that's really what we're going to talk about during the presentation today. And then finally, we'll talk a little bit about this ongoing project, right? I call it expanding the sale here, but what I really mean is 
what I said in the first slide, FileMaker solutions are, are present tense, we're building. So we're constantly expanding, we're constantly looking to improve what we've done uh, to build uh, on our expertise and build on our experiences and leverage those as, as needs change. So case study number one, uh, I've left this individual uh, anonymous to protect the, uh, what I'll call innocent, but they're really not so innocent. I think they're to a large extent, they're kind of culpable for their own predicament. So let's talk about this individual. So they work in a Fortune 1000 uh, company, a Fortune 100 company. They have a, uh, over 600 licensed FileMaker Pro users that they support. Uh, they have many applications, uh, many people that are using instant web publishing, but quite honestly, the individual that we're talking about here doesn't know how many people are hitting their solution through the web. Uh, which I think is very unfortunate. They have um, a range of servers of, of between two and four, uh, and each one of these servers has about 100 files on each server. There are many multi-file solutions, uh, but unfortunately, uh, this individual uh, just doesn't have the time to really get a, a firm grasp on that. Um, and they're serving and supporting over 10 business units within their organization. Now, uh, FileMaker is doing some pretty interesting things. They're pulling daily reports and automatically generating PDF emails uh, to the top executive teams giving readout on the prior day's business results. So a very high profile activity. FileMaker is also responsible for keeping track of the uh, production schedule uh, for the core business of this particular customer. So two extraordinarily vital functions, right? Business results and workflow, right, or project management. So very, very mission critical applications. Unfortunately, uh, this individual is very resource constrained, which is of course understandable when you're supporting 600 plus users and a few dozen uh, solutions, a couple hundred files for servers. Of course you're going to be pretty constrained. Um, they're also not often able to go to FileMaker's developer conference. Um, they're concerned, however, that their development skills are atrophying because they're constantly in a fire put out mode as opposed to a business building mode. Um, and of course, over time, user expectations change um, and if applications are not well maintained, they are perceived of as atrophying or decaying. Uh, so we have skills atrophy and we have got quality decay happening there. Um, the end user community is getting behind on their version of FileMaker. The .fmp12 file format change was a, represented a pretty good challenge and we've got 600 users and a, and a couple of hundred FileMaker files. It's a project to convert. So um, they have yet to convert to FileMaker 12, which has now been in market uh, not quite for two years, but coming up on it. So users know when they're using an old version of software. That's something to be mindful of. Um, and this individual, unfortunately, is becoming increasingly isolated within the FileMaker community because with FileMaker uh, 12 being um, out so long and introducing so many wonderful new features, uh, themes, and execute SQL among them, uh, an awful lot of the communications and conversations and development projects and webinars that FileMaker does are all around FileMaker 12 features, which unfortunately are just not relevant to this individual. Uh, so we've got that kind of isolation. Oh, I mentioned before dissatisfied users. Um, and then finally, you know, this is a situation where if, if uh, enough users are upset, you know, you've got a, a, a risk, right? You might, you might find yourself looking for work. And, and after all those other um, circumstances above are true, you know, would, would, do you really want to be looking for work when you haven't really developed in a current version of FileMaker? Uh, do you want to be looking for work when you've, you've, you've um, uh, you know, kind of lost contact. It'll make even that uh, act a little bit more complicated. So, um, here's something that occurs to me when I work with folks uh, that fit this profile. It makes me sad. I, I see wonderful, hardworking people that uh, are unable to uh, get what they need, uh, as well as unable to really execute to the best of their abilities. So, it, it does uh, unfortunately make me, uh, as an observer, uh, frustrated for them and, and certainly sad on their behalf. So I really do believe that there is a better way uh, and, um, and and the way that things should be. So let's talk a little bit more about that. So the uh, 
first case study that I'm going to share with you today is um, uh, for uh, National Geographic. This is a very, very well-run team. Uh, we have uh, the team leader there is Rick uh, in the front left with the mustache and glasses there. And he's got a wonderful team of FileMaker developers and he's done a wonderful job of presenting his solutions uh, within National Geographic. And in fact, we've got the, in the center there, we've got George Hubbs, who's the uh, CIO uh, at National Geographic. Uh, who is willing to pose for this picture and, and um, we have a great relationship with this team so much so that when I asked them for this photograph not only were they willing to do it for me but they put a, a wonderful National Geographic spin on it. They, uh, they, uh, they, 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 they're proud of where they work and uh, I'm proud of the work that they do. So this is a great team and let me tell you a little bit about them. So the business challenge that they were facing not too terribly long ago was that um, the National Geographic was uh, uh, deprecating their use of Lotus Notes in favor of Google Mail and Google Docs, um, but uh, this left a little bit of a void, right? So Google Docs are great, uh, Mail is great, but there's this little need for what I'll call tactical application development that was uh, not being met. And so as a result, uh, each one of these individual organizations within that geo had what I'll call discrete workflows, right? So National Geographic Television had a different workflow, work process than the magazine. Uh, and even within the magazine division, you've got daily, you've got weekly, and you've got monthly uh, activities that are being done and all have slightly different workflows and processes. And so what's nice about National Geographic as a corporation is that they, they understand that these uh, uh, workflows are, are, are different. So this idea of a strategic versus tactical application is something that is uh, uh, well understood within National Geographic. So that is the first question that you might want to ask yourself when you're, um, uh, you're being faced with FileMaker challenges, you're having a hard time uh, articulating to folks why FileMaker is a valid uh, part of your solution stack uh, within your particular company. Is you ask yourself, do they understand what the uh, and value discrete workflows. So, for instance, um, I've got a work group level application. This benefits five or ten or six or, or twenty people within my organization directly. I'm part of a hundred person organization. Do we understand that my team has a different workflow than someone else? I mean, all too often uh, we'll see is that. Uh, the lowest common denominator is what IT typically supports, right? Uh, you could be a nuclear physicist or a, an administrative assistant or a football coach and you're going to get a, a, a laptop, you're going to get Microsoft Office, you'll get a browser and off you go, right? So if you're there, then you really need to, to focus in on what, uh, the need for local tools, local uh, workflow tools that can uh, facilitate um, uh, efficiency. If you've already got an efficiency model, then great, that's one last thing, um, and, and that's what they had at National Geographic. So it's imperative that you self-diagnose yourself um, uh, as to which, which situation you're in there. But at National Geographic, they accept the notion of uh, work group level uh, workflow processes and procedures. So that was great for them. So actions taken. Uh, FileMaker was analyzed uh, along with many alternative platforms, right? What other stuff is out there? Can we look at Microsoft Access? How does that behave as a workgroup application? Can that do something for us? Uh, what other tools are available to us? Can we build this, these solutions in the web? Can we rewrite them? Um, and the other thing that was done at the same time is that the Lotus Notes developer team was actually introduced uh, to FileMaker through the FileMaker training series. So they were trained in FileMaker. And ultimately what, was, what happened is that the applications were migrated, uh, updated, and rewritten in FileMaker Pro. Um, and over time what they've done is they've maintained a very careful inventory of these applications, who owns the application, who built the application, the business unit that's using the application, and what the business impact of each one of these applications uh, is. And so as a result, a presentation was built uh, that articulated each one of these points. And it's a great way of, of, of keeping inventory. And, and uh, so, so here are some examples from a 66-slide internal presentation that the, uh, the good folks at, at National Geographic were, were kind enough to share with me. Um, and as we'll see, each one of these solutions articulates the business impact. So let's look at that. So first, we've got an overview, right? We've got 
FileMaker servers, we've got a count of the applications, we've got a, a listing here of the other technologies that FileMaker touches, uh, PHP, PeopleSoft, and so forth. Uh, and then we also have a listing of the other um, physical assets that FileMaker is touching, right? So here's an example of a specific application. You'll see on the right, what does the application do? We've got it branded. This is a nice touch as well. Uh, we've got a user interface that reflects the needs of the organization. This one happens to be National Geographic Television. We've got an articulation of which version of FileMaker this is being run. You, you'll notice we've got a conversion date that's expected for the application. We list the server. We list the user count, uh, the, uh, the status of the application, and the what they'll call maintenance, right? How much work are we doing in this application uh, to, to keep it working? And who's the administrator and who's the business owner? So this is a very great way of communicating to someone who may not be familiar with this tool what this tool does and how it impacts the organization. So here's another uh, similar uh, organization is being supported, but here's a more detailed view of this application, right? So we can see this is expense reporting around a production. Right, so some very specific functionality here is being tracked. You can see as well that there's a technology crossover here. So some of the data that's uh, built, uh, or I should say uh, accumulated in this FileMaker system or captured in this FileMaker system, then goes on and touches upstream system. So it affects the business down the road. Again, you can see the interface is branded uh, to reflect the, uh, the organization, um, and there is a very clean way of communicating the systems uh, that the FileMaker application is touching. And again, we reinforce with the user count the impact of the application. So here's another example. Uh, in this case, it is National Geographic Kids. And you can see here again, the user interface has been modified to reflect the personality of the publication, which is a great branding technique. We'll, we'll, we'll hit on this a number of times throughout the presentation. But branding is imperative. It's imperative that you build your FileMaker applications to be delightful. Uh, end user standards have gone up. Uh, not the least of which is because of the, the availability of, of uh, iPads and iPhones. User expectations are really through the roof in that regard. So it's imperative that we as the developer community keep an eye on that and uh, reflect the personalities of our end users uh, in, uh, in our applications that we build. And I think FileMaker's done a pretty good job of actually making content available to you as well as tools within the platform itself to make the user interface building challenge a little bit easier for folks on your end. So again, we've got user uh, systems that we're touching, where the crossover points are, and uh, who the business owner is uh, as well. So generally speaking, this is not terribly difficult information or shouldn't be terribly difficult information to come by, but it's great that we're able to look at it all at once. And again, uh, another slide uh, of the same application, this time a little bit more detail. And again, you can see this, this is performing some fairly important things in terms of managing contracts um, and so forth. And again, we've got a connection to an, uh, an external system here that's relevant. Another tip. So this is another application uh, that the, folk, the Nat Geo team built. And again, this is a great uh, benefit is if, you, if you've got an internal IT organization and you're trying to uh, influence them in the, in the direction of favoring FileMaker, wouldn't it be great if you could build them an application so that they could benefit from your skills? Uh, in this case, the Netgeo team was, was, was good enough to do that. You can see here we've got a directory application. We've got some um, uh, tracking application functionality as well, uh, some work requests, uh, and so forth. So again, uh, a, a lovely way of um, making friends with the good people in the IT organization. And again, um, we can see that the branding has is, is been thought of here as well. So what are the outcomes? So organizational stability. Right. Um, this team has been in place for a while, uh, which is saying something given that the publishing industry has been in flux uh, of late. Uh, we've got a team of folks that was able to join us at the FileMaker Developer Conference, so we've got budget, we've got the time off so that the team could uh, uh, improve their skills by going out to, to the FileMaker Developer Conference. We've got staffing levels. One of the individuals that was in that photograph is actually a, a consultant that's on staff at, at Nat Geo. 
So again, one of the challenges is, you know, in tough economic times, how do we maintain our staffing levels, right? Um, so they've been able to do that. They also have access to training, and I'm not just talking about FileMaker training, but I'm also talking about external system training. So PHP is an example, getting PHP training. You know, that's a nice uh, way to extend your functionality or FileMaker solution, and it's great that the FileMaker team can get that PHP training. And of course, hardware, plugins, uh, these sorts of things. Uh, when things are running well, you, you can get the tools that you need uh, to do the job. And I think this is one of the greatest benefits, so a place at the planning table. You know, all too often uh, in customer situations, I've been called in as the solution of last resort. Uh, uh, more often than I care to admit, I've heard the following phrase, hey, we just blew our six-figure budget on a non-FileMaker system that we had uh, decided on to replace the FileMaker system that we didn't know we liked. Uh, <laughs> and so can you, FileMaker, possibly help us because we spent all our money on a system implementation that ultimately has failed? Uh, I hope not to get to that, right? So what, uh, what uh, Rick has been able to do with his hard work at National Geographic was, hey, look at the solutions that we're providing, look at the business impact of these solutions that we're providing, and instead of asking why FileMaker, let's turn it around now, and now the situation is, well, why not FileMaker, right? This is our low-cost tactical solution. Uh, it's our platform of choice for this kind of business challenge. Why not use FileMaker? So again, a place at the planning table. And then ultimately job satisfaction, right? And job satisfaction, I think, is an outcome of all of the other benefits that we've, we've, we've already listed here. So generally speaking, this is a, uh, a well-run team that's content with what they do. They get the resources that they need in a timely manner. So that's one of the benefits. Another case study, this is um, IT Solutions. This is a platinum FileMaker development organization out of uh, the Philadelphia area. And we're going to be talking about one of their customers. But the solution that we're going to be looking at was built by this team. Uh, we've got Mark Adler, we've got Colin Keefe, we've got Winnie, and we've got Jim there. Um, and so let's talk about the solution that they've built. So th their customer is a diversified financial services company. They are Fortune 1000. They've got a $9 billion market capitalization, and they have a centralized marketing services department. This marketing services department is about 100 people, um, and they do approximately 5,000 jobs a year. They're distributed across five locations, and they are cross-platform. Right? So this is a fairly standard profile for a creative services organization uh, that is entertaining using FileMaker. Uh, we've got many, many, many examples of these throughout the industry. So here's the before photo. This is my single favorite slide of the entire presentation. So uh, unfortunately, I can't see everybody here, but hands up if you've ever seen one of these, right? So this is a job tracking system. We're keeping track of job numbers based on a printout. I'll imagine that there's some very important significance associated with uh, pink highlighter as opposed to blue highlighter as opposed to what looks like a light blue highlighter. Um, and look at the green up there. That must have been a very, very important job or a not so important job. No way to tell at this point. But this is, this is very typical, right? People will ask me often what, uh, who FileMaker's competitors are. And sometimes we'll say spreadsheets. Sometimes I'll say Microsoft Access. And sometimes I'll say nothing. It depends on how I feel that day. You know, so in this particular case, we can see that the competitor is spreadsheet, pen and ink. Uh, the other thing that I'll point out here is you can see in the, in the bottom right of the photograph, it looks as though uh, this particular customer f uh, forged a strategic alliance with the 3M Corporation for what I'll call uh, a data cohesion strategy. So in other words, they've taped the rip in the piece of paper. Right? So all too often, this is the before. Uh, the best part about this is that the developer had the forethought when the customer was working in this kind of environment to take this photograph and establish this as the before. Uh, because um, you know, human nature being what it is, if you can't remind them periodically that this is where we were before the FileMaker implementation, it, it's very easy to focus in on some of the challenges that you might be facing as opposed to focusing in on how far you've come. Right? So this is a great uh, stake in the ground in that regard. So what are the challenges, right? So we wanted to create a centralized workflow. Um, we wanted to increase the transparency across the departments. 
uh, and we wanted to provide some trend reporting. So these are fairly uh, standard goals when one implements a creative services job tracking application. The development phase uh, was initially six months, so from concept to development, and they focused in on the top benefits, and this is something that we'll, we'll touch on at the end of the presentation, but focusing in on a couple of big things that you can do to improve uh, the business is, is, is what I would advocate for at first, right? So have an incremental approach. One of the great strengths of FileMaker is that there are no blind alleys. You know, if you've, if you've got to make changes, you can. Um, and so you focus on the big stuff, and then hopefully down the road you'll have the opportunity to, to get to other things through additional phases, right? So that's ex what I called expanding the sale in the original slide of the agenda. So focusing on campaign job schedule management, file server integration in quotes, and then down the road we do time tracking and internal chargeback and that kind of thing, and then ultimately reporting. So here's a couple of screenshots. Um, uh, of the application as it was built. And the one point that I, I'll make on this slide is you'll notice this red badge in the top right corner with the number nine in it. I've got the red arrow uh, pointing to it. And, and this is a great example of when a FileMaker consultant is a business consultant as well as being a development shop. So typically what customers will ask for at this particular stage of the game is, hey, if I've got something that I've got to act on, I would like for the system to send me an email. Right? We get that request all the time when we're talking to customers. And what the consultant did in this particular case is say, hey, you know what, that's a great request. We can certainly accomplish that goal. That's not a big challenge from a FileMaker point of view. However, um, as a workflow tool, I think you're undermining the system by doing that. By just telling people in email that they've got work to do, um, you're probably going to create a, kind of a callous. People will just automatically delete those emails or the email will be going off at all times of the day and then people ultimately will ignore them. Why not instead require that people log into the system and then have the entire system all the time remind them of work that they've got to do. And so what you'll see this badge changing uh, during the course of the examples that I'm about to show you. Uh, and again, the idea is that this, this is a FileMaker development shop that says, look, we're going to talk to you not only about the technical speeds and feeds, but we're going to act as a business consultant. We're going to improve your process and we're going to make recommendations about how your users interact with the system that are ultimately going to have business impact that are going to have nothing to do with the core functionality of FileMaker, the speeds and feeds, if you will, of the, uh, of the platform. So we'll talk more about that in the language section. But you can see here, here's another slide for a different person. Jim happens to be in the procurement department, and you can see he has 21 jobs that he's going to act on. Jim was a skeptical of this system initially. He didn't feel like he needed help. He had his Excel quoting tool, and he could build those requests and knock them out. Uh, but he uh, eventually became a believer uh, in the system and was able to improve his uh, quality of life. And, and one of the things that we did for him, of course, was, was this job reminder. So at the end, uh, remember, we saw in the uh, earlier part that the second phase was reporting, right? So one of the oldest uh, sayings in computing is, is, is um, what? Garbage in, garbage out, right? So one of the, the challenges that you face with, with, with reporting systems is if people aren't using the tool, if there isn't what we call voluntary compliance, then the reports at the end of the day are not going to be that good, right? If I just say, if they're saying, you know, as classic example is you need to log your hours. And if I'm logging my hours at, say, 5.15 on a Friday before I leave, uh, the accuracy and the granularity of that data is probably not going to be the best. But if my system allows me to track my hours as I do my job, and I do my job in the most efficient manner by using the system, then we'll get great reporting that's very, very accurate uh, and allow us to do all kinds of wonderful things like load balancing across resources, managing people, getting them the training that they need in a timely manner, or forecasting so that if we need to staff up, we can do it. Defense in the event that people are saying, hey, you know, you're, you know, we need budget cuts, you know, can you give us some headcount here? So um, again, a system that people want to use that's built around their needs is going to give you great reporting. So focus on the system first and reporting second. All too often, you know, systems are built around outcomes around reports as opposed to around the, the individuals. And that, what, that, in my opinion, that's what makes FileMaker great is we focus on the productivity of the individual or we can focus on the productivity of the individual. Uh, and that's a nuanced conversation, I'll, I'll, I'll grant you, but it's imperative that you communicate that to your audience. 
the people that you're going to ask to pay for the system, the people that you're going to ask to support the system down the road. Hey, this is unique about FileMaker. Again, getting back to that original theme, FileMaker is about building great solutions, right? So we need to communicate that that's part of it. Great solutions are solutions that people want to use. Uh, and ultimately, the reporting, which is the outcome, is going to be great because of that. So here are the outcomes for this particular customer. Drastic improvement in role relations. I'm from New Jersey. What we say is people aren't yelling at each other anymore, right? Um, some resources are reassigned rather than having to walk around and sort of be professional nags for a living. They've been reassigned, allowed to do creative work instead. Um, there's no more physical job jacket. That's great um, uh, as well. And there's a streamlined process. Jim, our procurement guy, he can... Uh, do his job more quickly. We reduce the number of rush charges, as an example. So there's a return on investment uh, benefit right there in terms of cost. Uh, and actually, you'll see here when the ROI was calculated for this particular solution, it was less than a year. So for the developer, this has been a five-year-plus ongoing relationship with this customer. It's been stable, and of course, it's been profitable for them. So these are the outcomes of a great example. So. What can we learn from these examples? Here's a saying I like to remind people of. Success has many fathers. Failure is an orphan. And what I mean by this is your success, if you have a FileMaker system that's been successful, you should share it. Uh, your success is your manager's success. right? Uh, so make sure that you're sharing it. And let's talk a little bit about sharing. Um, communications. How does your organization communicate with one another? What's the internal culture? Do you do a lot of presentations? Can you do a lot of presentations? For the most part, people would prefer to get their content through presentations. Go to meetings if you're a spread out team. Uh, In-person presentations if you're a team that are brief, that are well rehearsed, that are, are, are um, uh, pithy uh, and uh, ultimately entertaining and relevant. Um, Typically, presentations are better documents, less so, right, unless you live in a culture where people do spend an awful lot of time reading uh, documents. Um, I, I recommend that a presentation is, is a much better way of communicating your success over documentation. Documentation is a nice complementary thing. It, it can be a stake, stake in the ground. It can act as a, as a data point. Uh, but presentations are how you know that your audience is listening and that they've heard what you said and affords them the opportunity to ask you questions about it. But great presentations do not happen by accident. Uh, and so um, it's imperative that you practice and seek training. Not everyone is born uh, a, a Steve Jobs. Indeed, Steve Jobs was not born a Steve Jobs. And so this is a, a book that I, I've used to, to help me in, in my journey of becoming a, a presenter. Uh, it's, it's called Resonate. And, um, the wonderful thing about this particular book, it actually goes through two of the most beautiful presentations that you've ever seen. One is, happens to be the, the iPhone launch. And it studies exactly what Mr. Jobs uh, did during that presentation that made that presentation so memorable, so relevant, and so powerful. So I'll remind you there, it's not enough to be right. Uh, when, you're, when you've built your FileMaker-based solutions, you've got to be effective, right? So some of that is these guys may not understand. Outsiders may not understand the business impact of your solution. So it's imperative that you take some time to help them understand that. Um, and so another little pointer here is do you have a portfolio? You know, are you ready to give this presentation? Think of the National Geographic example. Rick is ready to give that presentation at a moment's notice. He's got that slide deck with him at any time. He can cut it down. He can trim it to the, to, to the salient points for the audience uh, that he's got. But um, uh, he's got that presentation at the ready. So again, focus on uh, presentation skills. Do them uh, and present your solutions and present the relevant business uh, impact of those solutions. Here's another tip. Uh, design proposed solutions with the stated benefit, right? Um, so why are you building the FileMaker-based solution, right? Why have you done it? What was the original challenge that you were facing? Remember that piece of paper, right, with the, all the writing on it. What problem were we trying to solve? Was it a relevant problem that we solved? Um, so what are your individual organization's metrics for success? Is it return on investment? Is it total cost of ownership? Uh, is it compliance? And we talked about those. Um, so specifically correlate your solution 
to those metrics. Now I saw this cartoon, Matt O'Dell, our systems engineer, one of our uh, systems engineers, now he's in marketing, has shared this cartoon with me uh, many years ago, but I always thought it was relevant to the FileMaker community. Right? Can you pass the salt? And then the developer says, uh, you know, hey, I said pass the salt. I know I'm developing a system to pass you arbitrary condiments. Yeah, but it's been 20 minutes, right? Well, but it'll save you time in the long run, right? So I've developed a, a cumbersome system that's taken lots of time and it's not relevant to your needs, right? So I, I have a, a, a saying that I use from time to time, which is, you know, anytime a module is built in FileMaker um, and, 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 and it goes unused, a FileMaker systems engineer sheds a tear. Right, so it, it's something that we see from time to time, and so I'll remind everyone when you're building your FileMaker-based systems, make sure it's relevant, uh, and you understand that uh, what it, what its impact is going to be before you endeavor to spend so much of your own time and energy uh, on building a solution. Document your return on investment, or whatever the metric is. Right, so you name your solution. Right, getting back to that branding issue, every report. Uh, should have the name of the solution right at the bottom. There's a fantastic tip. Think of our first friend, our anonymous friend, who's sending reports out to the executive of his company every day as part of an automated process. It's a PDF. What if he just wrote on the bottom of it, powered by your, could be powered by FileMaker, but it could be powered by your application development department or whatever that is. So it's branding, right? So this is where that, that uh, particular report comes from. So when someone says, hey, what's this department do? We, we, we built that awareness within the organization. And then focus on the thing that the application does, right? It can be one, right? Think of um, you know, uh, the presentation for National Geographic. What, what did that application specifically accomplish? What did each one of those applications accomplish? Um, here's another tip. Uh, know, know the cost of doing uh, this particular function, whatever the application does, in another technology. So one of the interesting uh, stories, the second uh, case study that we did there, uh, the, the financial services company, um, the, the, the solution was built both in FileMaker as well as in .NET. And so um, IT solutions are, are platinum members, .NET certified fi uh, developer as well as a FileMaker based uh, developer. And when a customer came to them looking for a solution, they said, hey, you know, They'd come to them with a .NET request. They said, we, we, this is our development environment of choice. If you guys could build this application for us, that would be great. And the IT solutions folks said, of course we can build it for you in .NET, but have you looked at FileMaker, right? And of course, the, the cost basis for a FileMaker-based solution versus a .NET solution is sort of 10 to 1. And so um, financial services companies sort of leapt at the opportunity to have a low-cost, fully functional solution out there. So, Again, if you're not familiar with other technologies, what would it cost to build a FileMaker, this solution that you've got in FileMaker in a web-based application or in a .NET-based application? If you've got an existing application, I would encourage you, bid it out using other technologies. You don't have to become masters yourself, so you could you know, take, take your FileMaker-based solution and turn it into a, a, a request for proposal from alternative vendors and say, hey, to replicate this functionality, what would the cost be? Right? So that, that's a great thing to do proactively. And then as you're building the solutions, just remember, get back to that benefit statement or return on investment statement, constantly focusing on that. So data gathering, right? It's, it, it's what we do as FileMaker developers, right? So why not use the tool or why not use our process to gather information? So one of my clients uh, has a questionnaire that they distribute before they engage uh, in any development project. And you can see it's fairly straightforward. If I'm an end user, uh, or I should say, if I'm an end user, I don't think it's unfair of my developer to ask for these questions be answered before I ask them to spend so much of their time and effort. Uh, so for instance, you can see what's this type of benefit that you expect from implementation of this database? Check all that apply. Uh, so here's some questions uh, that you could be asking your end users. What, what, what are the metrics of success? Is it labor savings? Is it cost savings? Um, and then you'll see here my favorite, uh, which is question four here is, would there be any additional repercussions resulting from delaying or canceling the implementation of this database? This is one of my favorite all-time questions. I say it a little bit differently. What I mean is, what's the cost of doing nothing, right? Uh, if people are not willing to engage in the solution, there's an, there's an implied cost, uh, meaning if you don't do it today, you're going to incur some costs. What is that? Can you document that? 
So gather data. Demos, slightly different than presentations, right? Um, or let me say that definitively. Demos are different than presentations. So it's imperative that not only do you polish up your presentation skills, but it's imperative that your demo skills be top notch as well. Anybody that's had the good fortune to go to a FileMaker developer conference and sit through one of Dave Knight's presentations uh, can tell you that you know, some people can really demo and some people maybe can't. But Dave is, is, is one of the best in the FileMaker community. And when I ask him about preparation time, he'll tell me, oh, four hours, six hours. And uh, I did a casual kind of poll of all the developers at FileMaker Developer Conference who were presenting, and I asked them about presentation preparation. And I said you know, the, the number ranged from two hours to six hours for preparation. So again, it's imperative that you uh, prepare to demonstrate your application, uh, and you need to take the audience uh, and their position in mind, right? So you're presenting to your solution to a bunch of FileMaker developers, you're going to want to focus on the technical aspects of the solution. Hey, here's where I use script triggers to do this. Notice here we're using execute SQL to give me this list of unique values from the related table. I've simplified my relational graph using execute SQL. These are all relevant things to a FileMaker developer community, but if I'm presenting to end users, we might want to talk about user interface. We might want to talk about buttons on layouts and things like that and the functions that they perform. So your demo is going to be very, very different. So plan a accordingly and, per, and rehearse uh, your demonstrations and tell a story. What was the problem? Think back to that, again, the picture of the, the list of uh, handwritten numbers uh, from before. What was the use case? How is it? What are we solving? Again, another example of a fantastic, uh, uh, fantastically talented individual who does great demonstrations. Uh, Terry Barwigan did a great job at this year's FileMaker Developer Conference, and he's focusing on the benefits of the application, right? Um, so when you're building a, a demonstration and your plan for the demo, you focus on benefits, right? And again, use scenario-based solutions, right? So what's the use case? Tell a story, right? Um, FileMaker has something that we call zero to 60 demonstration, where we take a spreadsheet, um, which is a reference point for the general audience. Most people use uh, spreadsheets uh, for many things. Uh, many people use, abuse spreadsheets. And so we take these, a very complicated, very large spreadsheet. We bring it into FileMaker. We make it available to multiple users. We then project it onto an iPad. We then allow people that are using iPads and iPhones to edit the data. We add a container field. We allow people using the iPhones and iPads to add a picture to the database. And they get the idea of what FileMaker is a platform from this demonstration. Because the point that we're trying to make is, hey, that this is a great tool to use. Um, and this is a great demo that you can do to communicate that. I think you all should be adept at handling that kind of demonstration uh, because you're trying to communicate what the platform is to people, right? Uh, so uh, if you've got that demo set, we'd be happy to provide that for you. We've got webinars. Uh, building your first iOS app uh, is basically this iOS presentation. So um, look for that and be prepared for that. So communications. That's the other challenge that we're talking about. Communicating with folks is, is, is something that re can require a plan, right? How are we going to communicate uh, as we're preparing to do one of these presentations? Um, again, we've, we've hit on a number of these things, but focusing on solving problems um, and serving as what I'll call a trusted advisor, right? How many times have you been in those communications situations where you keep telling people the same thing over and over again? This is the right way to go, guys. This is the right way to go. And you're just not getting anywhere. You're not making any head way. Um, and some of that has to do with communication style. So these are two books that uh, I particularly enjoy. The Conceptual Selling, I think, is, is just absolutely great. And, uh, and I would strongly encourage uh, you to take a look at that book. And it talks about uh, how do we build a plan for communication, right? It, it's a sales book on its surface, but it, it's a communications uh, lesson. And so I would strongly encourage you to take a look at that particular book. So, communications. Here's a, a cartoon that um, nearly everyone in the technical community will get right away and find humorous. Uh, but you'll notice there's an awful lot that's not said here. If you really dig into this particular uh, cartoon, you'll see that while we're not saying that uh, this individual is using iPhoto, 
and we're saying, well, gee, Superman is Clark Kent, right? So these are not necessarily <laughs> being said, but everyone in the technical community can look at this and instantly understand the joke. If we were to show this to a non-technical community, they, they may not understand what iPhoto face recognition is, as an example, right? Um, so that's something to be mindful of when we're, when we're building our communications plan and we're preparing for a presentation. Who are we talking to? Are they a technical audience? Are they not a technical audience? Are they a business audience? Do they communicate visually using charts or would they prefer raw data? You need to know your audience. Credibility. Uh, this is a wonderful book. I strongly recommend it. It's called The Man Who Lied uh, to His Laptop. It's by Clifford Nass. And interestingly enough, uh, Clifford was hired by Microsoft to explain to Microsoft why people hated Clippy. Um, and so uh, this book attracted uh, my attention based on that. Uh, but what we talked a lot about in this book was about how credibility is acquired, right? Are you credible when you walk in to speak to somebody? And oftentimes, we're not credible and we don't know why, right? So one of the challenges that you have as a FileMaker developer is, are you credible? Uh, if you're telling somebody something over and over again, they're still not taking your advice, chances are you're not. Uh, and that can come from a, a variety of different uh, reasons. One of them might be, are you certified? Right? Are you a certified FileMaker developer? If you're an in-house FileMaker developer, you should uh, pursue certification not only for your career benefits, but it will help you be a credible resource within your organization as well. And so I would encourage you to study up on, uh, on credibility as well. There's a great book for that. Um, speaking of credibility, um, being a trusted advisor, right? So once you have obtained credibility uh, and you're a credible resource within your organization, you can then become what we, uh, a consultant would call a trusted advisor. Uh, and, and what that means is you, when you provide advice to folks, they're not questioning where you're coming from. They believe that you have an understanding of their business objective. You have their best interests at heart when you're giving them advice. You're placing the business need first. Um, you're understanding the relative impact of the potential solution and what it might have. You're asking that customer to, you know, when we say generate diversion thinking, we're saying, go look at other solutions. Go get, look at other alternatives. What's the cost of doing nothing? Um, and what are the other alternatives and what's their impact? And then finally, we're going to assist them in making the best alternative. We're going to help them make the right choice for them. And we're going to be neutral the entire time. We're not going to advocate for FileMaker over another platform as a reflex uh, action. Instead, we're going to stay neutral as we can because ultimately, uh, the technical community, the FileMaker community, we're charged with being a technical liaison. We can provide advice on how to pursue a challenge, how to resolve a business challenge. And by remaining neutral, uh, we can maximize our credibility uh, and we can uh, ultimately serve the needs of the business. And FileMaker is a great platform. It's a great tool. We don't need to uh, influence beyond it what, it what it earns in its own right. So the more neutral we are, um, uh, the more credible and the more trusted we will become. Other tips for advancing the process here, um, use the FileMaker website. We've got lots of resources. I'm going to uh, share those with you uh, at the end of the presentation. We've got a total cost of ownership white paper. We've got a return on investment tool. Um, but the other thing that I would advocate for is know your FileMaker sales reps. You know, I'm one of them. We've got, I've got many counterparts within the organization. Know your systems engineers. They're great resources. Know your inside rep. If you don't know these things, you can get them all uh, through our website. Um, and of course, uh, the FileMaker management team is an available resource as well. So come to DevCon and, and, and meet them and develop your own process. Um, what are your options? So to summarize, understand the goals of your customer first. And again, we're defining customer as anybody that might be a consumer uh, or a funder or a decision maker on our solution. Build solutions that have a valid business reason for being built. They're agreed upon, they're documented. Um, and then of course you document and present your good work um, so that people can understand what the valid business reason was and what the business impact of your solution is. And then finally, invest in yourself, communication styles, sales communication styles, presentation, demonstrations. Uh, expand your skills uh, in that regard. So in summary here, um, 
what we call the beginning is often the end, and to make an end is to make a new beginning. And so what I'm going to encourage you all to do is, is to make a new beginning uh, with that. So I think, now this gets to our FileMaker resources, and now what we're going to do is we're going to step into Q&A. So I'm going to hit the Escape button here. I'll leave this slide up, and um, we'll answer any questions if there are any. Jason, thank you very much for uh, that informative presentation. Um, first question that came in, a uh, customer was um, asking about the book or article that you mentioned about the iPhone launch. Is there, can we just refer back to that uh, so the customer can um, look that up? Yep, yeah, great. So that's Nancy Duarte is the author. This is available on Amazon.com. The book is called Resonate. Great, thank you. Um, here's probably a very common uh, question or uh, pushback that people might get from their IT department. Uh, so FileMaker works with MySQL. Why invest resources in FileMaker when MySQL or MySQL plus PHP does it all? Great question. Um, does what all, right? So th the way I would answer that question is what specifically are we trying to accomplish? Uh, there are many ways to skin a cat, and there are functionality uh, benefits to MySQL and PHP that FileMaker doesn't have. Similarly, there are certain functions that FileMaker can perform that MyPHP um, and SQL will struggle to perform. Um, a quick example of that would be projection of a container field to an iPhone and being able to use the native iPhone camera to add an image to a FileMaker database. That can be done in seconds with FileMaker. That would take a SQL or a PHP developer weeks and or months and or hundreds of thousands of dollars to replicate that functionality. So again, getting back to what are we trying to accomplish? If they can accomplish it uh, within by their terms, with PHP and SQL, great, uh, but that doesn't change what FileMaker is great at, right? So the question is, what's the problem, and is FileMaker the right solution for that particular problem? Hey, great, thank you, Jason. Um, another question that came in: somebody asks, "Our university IT often alludes to security concerns. Are there any resources available to make a case for security, and or more specifically, FileMaker and security?" Ah, that's a great question. So there's a couple, of, a couple of ways. So there's a speeds and feeds way of having that conversation. What I mean is a technical way to have that conversation. And that's where your system, FileMaker systems engineer uh, can come in to uh, be of great value. Uh, the other uh, way of accomplishing uh, this security debate is to talk about FileMaker implementation. So for instance, I handle the federal government. Uh, I can tell you the NSA uses FileMaker. I can tell you that the United States Army uh, has evaluated FileMaker and they have given it something called a certificate of net worthiness. Uh, FileMaker can work with something that they call a CAC card at the United States Army. So there are many, many examples of FileMaker working very, very well in highly secure environments. In, in the educational space, there are many, many examples of FileMaker being FERPA compliant. Uh, so. Uh, I would direct you to your FileMaker sales representative for, um, for that. Thank you, Jason. And um, it looks like we are close to the end point here, so I, I'd like to uh, thank you for uh, your presentation, Jason, and for everybody else logging in today. We do appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule to find out more about FileMaker, and we look forward to seeing you at a future FileMaker event. Thank you. Thank you all.